In this A-level, IB, high-level chemistry video, we're going to be talking about nucleophilic substitution. So I'll be talking you through what the term nucleophilic substitution actually means, and I'll be showing you various mechanisms, specifically ones involving halo alkanes reacting with hydroxide, cyanide, as well as ammonia. So that's what's coming up in today's video. Remember that I've previously done a video on electrophilic addition, so go check that one out if you're after that sort of thing. So first of all, starting with the meaning of these words. Now, file means liking, and nucleo means concerning the nucleus. Remember for me, because nucleuses contain neutrons and protons, a nucleus is actually positively charged. So if we put those two things together, what is a nucleophile? Well, it's something which likes positivity. And that's going to be really important. So I've just tidied that up a bit. Now, substitution, like in a football match or any kind of sporting event, just means swapping. So we're swapping one atom or one element for another. So let's first of all check out the basic mechanism. So not with any specific examples, we're just gonna have a look at how this actually works. So the first thing we need is our halo alkane. And this always needs to be present. So I'm going to use, in this example, bromoethane. So remember, ethane means it contains two carbon atoms. Just make sure you count up all your bonds. All the carbons form four bonds, and hydrogen and bromine form one bond. Now I'm going to write some helpful notes on the side. Notice that bromine is far more electronegative than carbon. So that means that the bromine draws away those electrons within the bond, meaning that the electrons sit far closer to bromine compared with carbon. And then you end up with this situation where we have the CBr bond with the bromine being delta negative and the carbon being delta positive. So if we add that detail to the bromoethane, we know that our bromine is slightly negative, the carbon is slightly positive. And what have we said about a nucleophile? Well, we said that it's something which loves positivity. So hopefully you can see therefore that our nucleophile is going to really love this delta positive carbon and that indeed is where it's going to attack. So here's a generic nucleophile, I haven't named which one, it has a lone pair as always and that's going to attack with a curly arrow at the carbon and so because that slightly positive carbon accepts the lone pair from the nucleophile, well what is the nucleophile acting as? Well it's acting as an electron pair donor and that's actually its official definition, a nucleophile is an electron pair donor. And then almost at the same time, you find that there's a second movement of electrons, and that's from the carbon-bromine bond to the bromine. So there's our second important curly arrow. So if we look at the actual product produced, we know the nucleophile will now be attached. And because that nucleophile has swapped places with the bromine, we can say that a substitution reaction has taken place. So now let's look at specific examples so let's do bromo, ethane, and the hydroxide ion, which remember is OH minus, and again it has a lone pair. So a very similar process. So here's our bromo ethane. Our nucleophile is the hydroxide ion, shown here with its lone pair. Remember that that lone pair will attack at a place where it's slightly positive, so that's remember the carbon. So the lone pair attacks here forcing the electrons from the carbon-bromine bond towards the bromine. So there's your second arrow. So let's have a look at our product. That OH swaps with the bromine. And so what is our product? Well, the longest carbon chain is two carbons, so that's why it's ETH. And the OH group, remember, belongs to the homologous series of alcohols, so that's why this is ethanol. Second example now, bromoethane and the cyanide ion. CN minus, very similar situation. Here's our bromoethane, here's our cyanide ion. The lone pair on the cyanide, which remember is acting as the nucleophile, attacks at that slightly positive carbon, forcing the electrons from that bond to bromine. Drawing out the final structure, therefore, it's worth noticing if I just remove that, that this is actually a triple bond. Now, in terms of naming this, notice that our longest carbon chain actually contains three carbons which is why we've gone from it being eth to prop. 
So it's propane, and then the CN is a nitrile. So propane nitrile is the name of our product. Then lastly, bromoethane and ammonia. Notice that it's ammonia. Before we had ions, both the cyanide ion and the hydroxide ion. Here we have ammonia. So it's going to behave in a similar way, but with an extra step. So starting with bromoethane, our nucleophile, the ammonia. Let's draw that here. That lone pair is going to attack that slightly positive carbon as usual, forcing the electrons across. Our intermediate stage therefore looks like this. So the NH3 will join, but the problem is because that nitrogen donated an electron, it's now electron deficient because it donated an electron to carbon, which is why it's a cation. And that's why we have an intermediate stage because obviously this can't be our final product. So what's the only sensible thing that can happen here? Well, the electron from one of the hydrogens on the end of this molecule needs to be donated to that electron deficient nitrogen. So that's what our curly arrow here is showing. So effectively, that means we lose that last hydrogen atom. So here's our final product. What is this called? Well, the NH2 group is an amine. So the name will include amine. And then you have that group here. We have to name it. And the way we name that is by calling it an ethyl group. So it's ethylamine or ethylamine.